What? What is this? <laughs> Pathetic. She's so fast, she's so gross, she will never find love. Pathetic. The only one who can love this woman is a good lord. Up above the mountain, pathetic. She will never change, she will always stay the same. Pathetic and insane. Pathetic. Deadly scary, he don't care. Hey, hey, hey. Damn, I'm doing. Well, well, well. Welcome back to Canada, my little gherkins. Carbohydrate Canadian has officially left Salah, Harry, and Julia behind and has arrived back in Leafland to take advantage of her right to free health care as a taxpaying citizen who is currently paying back taxes. We're going to start and finish this video with some community tab posts, so let's get right into it. We got a mini community tab rage on Saturday that started with this one that said, Why are you creep stalking my family's social media and making content out of it? Can you please fuck off? Thanks. This was likely in response to a video from a reactor who posted pictures of her family putting up their Christmas tree and speculating that they did it because Chantal came home. I didn't see anything that indicated this was the case. They just looked like normal pictures of a family putting up their tree to me. Anyway, she followed that up with this one that said, I have notified my family to make all of their social media private. To the ones making content using their social media, you are bored and gross and obsessed. Get a life. Log off. Fucking weirdos. I'm also taking a break from YouTube. I'm not in Canada yet and you won't know because I'm not making content for a while. Trash people, I swear. I'm not going to Canada for content for Goral World. I'm going to get help and deal with other things. YouTube seriously needs to obliterate Goral World, which aged really well considering it's now Tuesday, and she's already posted her video showing she's now in Canada. That was a super long YouTube break, Goral. Next, we got a long post related to the person who super chatted FFG saying she was going to Canada and was going to get her revenge on Chantal for allegedly calling her deceased children a gremlin. It said, As for this stupid moron psycho literally threatening me, I'm not afraid of trash like you. I never called your deceased sons gremlins, you weirdo. Lies. Demented. Anyway, nice incriminating yourself laugh my ass off. Try showing up. You will land in jail. Womp womp. I don't think you care, though, because you are trash and said you took charges before. If I sound vile, oh, well, I don't care anymore. I'm saying and doing what I want from now, and if you come for me, don't expect a warm hug. Actually, some people will be dealt with legally when I'm in Canada. A long time coming. Anyway, whoever this trashy psycho is, you ain't gonna shut anything up on me. Only thing your dumbass is gonna do is land you in jail. Moron. I can't with these people I so need to log off. And yeah, I'm ready, peaches. Come anywhere near me and see what happens to you. I don't give a shit if you're grieving and psychotic. Don't take your mental behavior out on me. All of you do that. Project your psychotic asses on me. Get fucked. And honestly, I don't blame Chantal for this one. I have yet to see any clips or posts that back up this person's claims that Chantal called her kids that. But regardless, Chantal is a stranger on the internet. I am all for having a laugh at the things she puts on the internet. And if it triggers you, I encourage you to log off and protect your own mental health. However, getting your passport to travel to an entirely different country, threatening to shut her mouth once and for all, and that you're bringing hell with you is too much. I feel for her that she lost three children, and if Chantal knew this and called them gremlins, she's a bigger piece of shit than we already know. But I'm not going to pretend I'm okay with death threats just because I don't like Chantal. I hope Angel Ma gets some grief counseling. Moving on, we got this final community tab post that was of course aimed at FFG. It said, Eight court cases in a few years for not paying rent. All of these screenshots are the names of court cases brought against FFG, and this witch has the nerve to make hundreds of videos talking shit on my finances and how I owe thousands. Oh, you mean like how you owe thousands to those landlords who never got paid? If this isn't hypocrisy and projection, I don't know what is. Also, you spent a couple of years talking shit and building your channel on me supporting an abusive bum. Looks like you and your abusive ex were both bums and grifters not paying rent wherever you went together. So again, projection... I have to wonder what triggered this particular rage because this is all old news. Anyway, enough of my blabbering. Let's get into the video we're here to see. Hello guys, so now we are heading for the Kuwait International Airport. I'm gonna miss you, babe. Oh my god. 
God. I hear goodbyes. Me too. <laughs> I have never seen Salah look so happy in the entire time he's been around. He knows he's finally going to be able to take the plastic off those car seats. He's about to be living his life without having to babysit his perpetually hungry wife. I hope Chantal remembers what she said about men being allowed to cheat if they are in a separate country from their wives. So I have my luggage here, ready to go for our first trip to Dubai. Okay, baby, relax. You are going now to Dubai. He is all but pushing her ass into the plane. Look how happy he is. Chantal, I hate to break it to you, but most married couples who have to say goodbye to their partners for extended periods of time, especially because they need to travel for dire health care. Don't smile like this. He don't love you, girl. Oh, she is really trying to force those tears out. Turn your fan back on, Chantal. Those aren't tears, that's sweat. And there's my plane. Going to Dubai, first flight. So this is my first time using Emirates. I usually use Qatar, so I'll see how it is. Um, they just had a cheaper flight this time. Around the holidays, it's very expensive. So, but I have a story time about that after about the uh, seats. So far the customer service is phenomenal. So my first flight is 5.45 p.m. Sorry, I had to drag my heavy carry-on all the way here to my gate and on, on, we're about to board, so. Your luggage had wheels. You walked and rolled it behind you and you're out of breath like you just ran a mile. Girl, I hope your first stop in Canada is the clinic because you're not doing well. Um, and it's an hour and 45 minute flight to Dubai. And then I have a five and a half hour layover in Dubai. Another thing I saw, it's a first class falcon. Falconry is bit really big in the Middle East here, so you're allowed to bring a falcon, I think. I'm not sure exactly the rules, but um, a man had a falcon with him. So yeah, I think you have to buy a seat for the falcon. And they're very, very cute. What are the odds that she asked that guy if she could record him and his falcon for her YouTube channel? Right, absolutely zero chance. So this is a Boeing 777, and so far the cabin is just so warm. The color scheme is warm, the sand dune detail on the walls, the huge entertainment screen too. As for my seatbelt extender, never be ashamed or shy to ask for one. Now I got lucky and the flight was pretty empty so I didn't have to get two seats but this was eye-opening for me and I've decided I'm not going to travel anymore without buying two seats. I can't bank on a seat being empty. You never know when a flight will be full and as you can see the armrest has to come down or else you have to buy two seats, so yeah. Haven't we all been saying this to her for years now? When she went to Thailand, the only reason she was able to get away with one seat was because Sala sat between her and another passenger, so she spilled over her seat onto Sala rather than a stranger. Knowing this, she still took a risk and purchased just one seat She's as selfish as they come, and I guarantee she will not buy two seats moving forward. She's just going to cross her fingers and hope she doesn't get a full flight. I will say that the air ventilation, the fan, is the strongest of any flight I've ever been on. So as you can see, the plane was like empty. It was crazy. The flight from Dubai to Montreal was more full, but still, this is, I've never seen it this empty before. Not gonna complain. All right, I'm gonna do voiceover because you can barely hear me here. But I was saying that the seats so far compared to Qatar are more comfortable. Um, they're about the same size, but there's something about the design that's more comfortable. Although I'm not gonna dog Qatar because I do love them as an airline as well. She goes into this more in her next video that she uploaded while I was editing this one. But if the seats are about the same size, why would this now all of the sudden be an eye-opening video that you need to purchase more than one seat? You've always barely fit, 
and you always get one seat knowing damn well if the plane was full, you'd have to either have people wait around so the staff can move seats around to accommodate you or be forced on standby. Selfish. So the engine noise drowned me out here too, but basically I said how much I miss Salah and then my pets, and I can't believe I'm on my way to Canada. It's surreal. How long do we think it took Salak to go out and party to celebrate her leaving? Can we take bets on how long until we get a live stream meltdown? So I gave back the Pepsi. I'm really trying not to drink soda, especially not Pepsi. Sure, Chantal. Meanwhile, you've admitted you've already had fast food onion rings. We totally believe you gave that soda back. The roof of the aircraft lights up with like, it looks like a night sky. It's so calming. And one thing that happened right after this shot, I thought we were going to die. I started praying to Allah, like I was saying, Astaghfirullah, please, if we die, send me to heaven. Like the turbulence, I've never experienced turbulence like this. It felt like the plane was flying, like dropping out of the sky. I, I had minor whiplash. You could hear all the drink carts fl like shaking in the back. It was bad. Like. It was really, really, really scary. And I was just like, oh my God, I had to take deep breaths. I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. Like I could start feeling my pulse just like beating on the sides of my, like in my temples. And I was getting lightheaded. Like I, if, I don't know, I watched too many plane crash videos, but this was intense turbulence. And luckily we made it through, <laughs> alhamdulillah. But it was, really bad. Has anyone been through really bad turbulence? Comment below. It can't be good for someone with an extremely enlarged heart to have heart palpitations on an aircraft, right? I wonder if she discussed her travel plans with her doctor in Kuwait to make sure she was doing the right things to make sure she didn't have a medical emergency in the air. Lol, who am I kidding? Of course she didn't. I never thought... I never thought I would see you again. I never thought. Oh, my car, my car. Reunited at last with my Kia. I know people are going to pause and look at every crumb and stain in this car, but do yourself a favor and just pass on it. This car needs to be cleaned so bad. So that's one of the things. First things I'm gonna do while I'm here is get this car cleaned up. I have to take it for service, for brake service actually, and get it cleaned up. Now I don't even care about the dirty car. We knew that thing was a pigsty, and honestly, it's not even as bad as I expected. I guess Auntie Phyllis cleaned out all of the fast food bags at least. What I'm more concerned about is the fact that she's still so stupid that she can't prevent giving away all the information people are looking for. It's already been exposed by the reflections in the windows that this car was parked at her aunt's apartment. Good job, Chantal. Now this is just, I'm so tired. Like, I was traveling for close to 25 hours after everything, barely sleeping. I need to put on my CPAP and get some good rest. So... I will be uh, doing Canada Beezing very soon, all right? So I appreciate the space um, I've been taking for a bit, but uh, Canada Bees very soon with more videos. And I hope you enjoyed my journey home. I just wanted to get here to Canada and get the travel over with. That journey is arduous and it's getting harder and harder. Um, I have to really just take a break from doing that journey for a little while, so. We'll talk about this more when we get to the next upload, but everything she's saying indicates that she has no plans to go back to Kuwait anytime soon. We know weight loss surgery can take years, and she doesn't want to take that trip anymore. Like I said before, I honestly think if she's in Canada for longer than a month, she'll never go back to Kuwait. Uh, yeah, but it's been rough and emotional because... I left another family behind and, well, you know, it's hard being away from my husband and my pets. Um, and those of you who think that I'm abandoning my pets, they're not only my pets, they're Salah's pets. He's their pet dad and he's going to take very good care of them until I can see them again, which does really bother me. You know, I really miss, I really miss them and... Inshallah, I will see them again soon. 
but I have a lot of things I have to take care of here for myself. And sometimes you need distance to take care of things, especially when you're from two different parts of the world, opposite ends of the world, and from two very different cultures. What do your different cultures have to do with you going to Canada for health care? That doesn't make any sense. You're not in Canada because his culture prevented you from getting medical care. Unless there's something you're not telling us. But nonetheless, no matter how far away, I will always love you. And we will see each other again soon. So I'm in Canada, but I'm bringing all of my morals with me and all of my beliefs with me and all of the changes that I've made to myself with me and I will work, continue to work on my character and my health here. As you can see, Julia Salah sent me this picture this morning of the pets and they're very happy with him. They're very close with him. They love us, you know, equally and he will take very good care of them for me and I will see them every day on video in the meantime. So th okay, we get it. You left your pets behind in Kuwait, but Salah will take care of them. Question for you though, Chantal. Have you or pet dad of the year taken Julia for her fungal bath yet? Is she fixed yet? Is she vaccinated? You're so concerned about people not thinking you abandoned her, but not one single update about what we're actually concerned about. How interesting. So my original plan was to finish this video with this community tab post, where she said she brought Beezer spray with her to Canada and might take it out to get real opinions from the public. But the bitch rapid fire uploaded another video with more community tab posts and was active in Salah's chat. So I'm not going to make you wait. Let's jump right into the rest. I'm in Canada and I'm just parked at a park here. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a bit about how I've been doing, a little bit more details about my trip and all this and that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have a swig of my, <laughs> yes, I'm still drinking it. This is the Unimate. I rely on this in the mornings now for energy. And if I didn't have this before my travel day, I would be in big trouble for energy levels. Trust me. <laughs> but does it help with lung capacity? Because you were wheezing your way through that airport, barely breathing, Brenda. Um, so basically I am feeling a lot better. That travel journey is just. I cannot do that for a long time. It's I'm just not in, in good shape enough for that. And, you know, I need to get in better shape before I can definitely do, uh, you know, total 25 hours of traveling. Um, because the flight and the layover and all that included was like over 21 hours. But then if I calculate also, I had to take a bus from Montreal to Ottawa. And then I had to get my car. I had to take um, a taxi to get my car. I haven't bothered to look, because I don't care that much, but I wonder what time her plane landed in Canada, because why didn't anybody in her family offer to get her from the airport? If I had been gone even for a month, it wouldn't matter if it was 3 a.m., my family would 100% be there to pick me up. So where it was parked, so yeah, and now here I am. I am, uh, you know, woke up pretty early because I crashed, like, I tried to stay up so I could fix my sleep pattern. I took that opportunity. Um, so I woke up at maybe 7 a.m. And uh, I'm going to have myself, I'm going to take myself out for breakfast. I'm not sure what I'm going to get, but I'm probably going to go to like some halal place or something. We'll see. That is the face of a woman who absolutely does not care if the breakfast is halal. I can't wait until she gets tired of pretending and rips that hijab off. It's going to take one time for Salah to not answer the phone, and she's going to be pig mad. I can't wait. So yeah, so for the travel journey, oh my gosh. Uh, now, I, I usually fly with Qatar Airways when I do international travel, and Qatar Airways is really, really, really good uh, airline. They're really good, and I would say comparing that with Emirates, my first time flying Emirates, they're very very small note very small chain like uh, differences I should say there's very small differences in quality um, the food both on both airlines is very good the seats in Emirates are a little more comfortable for me I find um, the Qatar Airways seats though are a little bit bigger a little little bit bigger uh, 
Because in Qatar, I could still put the armrest all the way down. It's tight. But uh, in Emirates, I, could barely, I couldn't do it. So you could barely get the armrest down on the Qatar flights. But again, you chose to keep buying one seat and hoping for the best. I'm still waiting to hear why this time was such a big eye-opener for you compared to every other time. Now, customer service-wise for Emirates, I was very impressed because... Um, so, you know, I'm a bigger person, so I get to the counter in Kuwait with Salah, and he's so sweet and supportive, and he was really worried that I, w he wouldn't be with me, even though I've done this travel before, but he's always worried when he's not with me that, uh, you know, he, he, that he can't be there to help support me with, like, carrying things for me or, you know, um, whatever I need, and he was very supportive like that in, in, Thailand, so I'm gonna say I did miss that having that support partner, but I was fine. But he would, you know, stop, you know, ask the lady at the desk and say, uh, you know, is there anyone who can help her from this gate to go into the gate? I said, Babe, I'm fine. I'm gonna be okay. It's like, are you sure? Because he knows I haven't been feeling the best. So I'm like, yes, I'm fine. I've uh, been having back problems. So, anyways, and my breathing and all that stuff. So, anyways. <laughs> So he treated you like a child that was going off to their other parents' house across the country for the summer. I don't understand how any of this is supposed to be cute. You're almost 40 years old, and you need help getting across the airport by yourself because your back hurts and you can't breathe. This isn't cute and dainty. It's terrifying. Even Soft Hands Tall Pete's is concerned that you can't make a flight because of your health, and you're laughing about it like it's the most adorable, quirky relationship story. How sad. Yeah, so I get to the counter, and the woman was so nice, and uh, she says, you know, I, I guess she noticed my size, and I've just always been kind of in the mind, I've been lucky, I don't need two seats, you know, I'm just in this, like, this denial state, all right? And uh, so she, she called someone over, and she's like, please wait, and um, she said, okay, so which seat do you have? Uh, you know, you have this seat, and I paid extra for it and for like a premium seat and she says if you like we can switch your seat to we'll give you a seat and for extra roominess for you comfort we'll block off the seat beside you so that there's no one sitting there i said oh i said well do you do i need to pay for two seats like if you think that you know, size-wise, with your seats, I won't be, I'll be encroaching, I won't be able to fit, won't be comfortable, because it's 13, not 14 hours, right, pretty much, so, and I had this in mind, I was a bit worried, you know, I just felt, maybe I'll need to buy two seats, so I had that plan in mind that I might have to buy two seats, so, uh, I said, you know, do I need to buy two seats, and they were like, no, 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 it's just, we can arrange things around, there's like an extra seat on the plane, it's not fully full, it's all right, so she's like, we'll give you your ticket at the gate. So basically what happened was um, I get to the gate from Kuwait to Dubai and there's a woman who comes up to me and she says, here's your new ticket. I printed a new boarding pass for you with your new seat number. And I said, nice. She, and I said, okay, is that because they blocked off a seat beside it? Um, and she was like, and she assured me, yes, you know. So all of that, just to say, like, they were so nice. Like, they pretty much gave me a free seat. Now, if the plane was fully full, I don't know if they would be even able to do that. And I might have to actually, I would have had to take, like, the next flight out or something. I don't know. No, they did not kind of give you a free seat. They did give you a free seat. She was extremely lucky this flight was almost completely empty. But more than that... She absolutely knows she needs two seats. She has fought us tooth and nail that she's a dainty queen and she can fit in one seat just fine, but she has always known that's not true. It's not just selfish to the other passengers who may have to wait around for seats to be rearranged because you want to test your luck. Those employees have much more important things to do than to move around your seat because you were neglectful in doing the right thing. I honestly wish they would have told you to buy another seat because I guarantee all this did was reinforce your entitled attitude that you don't need to pay for another seat. You'll just fly with Emirates because they have such good customer service that they will just take care of it. So that's why this experience kind of made me realize that 
you know, I think from now on, for sure, if I have to fly and if I'm, if I don't lose any weight before I have to fly again, I have to buy two seats. So, which, you know what? I'm fine with that. It gives you that extra level of, uh, assurity, you know, like, okay, at least I know I have two seats. No one's going to sit beside me. And I have that, that peace of mind. Notice she said, I think I will buy two seats from now on. Not I will. That's because she 100% will not buy two seats. Now, from sitting for 13 hours, I should have listened and just put on compression stockings because when you're sitting at that level, like when you're just sitting for 13 hours, even like eight hours is a long time to sit, I could feel my legs getting more and more pain. Um, and I'm like, what's going on? You know, like, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have a history of blood clots. Not in my limbs, but still, you know, that they can form there. And I'm thinking, how stupid am I? I should have wore compression stockings. I'm not prepared. I don't even know, like, where I... I just didn't think of the compression stockings or, you know, where to get them in Kuwait. So, I can find them easily here in Canada. Anyway, I move my legs around a lot. They, even on the screen, they remind you, stretch your legs, move your legs. So I was doing those exercises with my feet and I was moving my legs around and I was trying to get, you know, just stop it from, you know, uh, feeling sore every so once in a while and restless and just like, uh, and I noticed like last night, my feet, my legs, the bottom of my legs were swollen, swollen. Now this morning when I woke up, normal. So I had to raise my legs and they were just, I was sitting for too long. That's, that's what that was. So yeah, they're like not swollen at all anymore. So I just need, that's indicative to me that I just needed to raise them up for a bit. I guess it's not really possible for Chantal to walk around on a flight. Of course, she wouldn't take the proper precautions like something as simple as wearing compression socks. Chantal, this is the fourth time you've done this flight. Stop neglecting your health and putting other people at risk and do the damn bare minimum at least. Now, I know she said her legs swelled up, but ma'am, did your face swell too? I know I'm not the only one seeing these bulging ass cheeks. Like, is her hijab just on different than normal? Those jowls are popping today, Goral. So, yeah, I need to get my car taken care of. I want to, um, uh, this thing is finally, this thing is paid off. So, I have a car for a first time where... I have it fully paid off. So that's awesome. You know, I don't have to worry about that. I'm driving this thing into the ground. It's 2016. It's not bad. There's people driving older cars on that on the road, whatever. So, and it, it's sentimental at this point. This is a Foodie Beauty classic, okay? It's the Kia. <laughs> so I need to get some service done on it though, because it's, you know, been a while. Um, I had somebody start it for me once in a while but it's, it's you know i'm driving it around uh the tires are good i have winter tires on um i want to get brake service i want to get a checkup on the car and i need to clean it that is it's disgusting it's ew it's dusty and ew ew i wonder how long the loan is on the new suv she got sala she's going to be paying that for 72 months babe i bet he ripped that plastic off them seats the minute he got back to the parking lot I bet the Kia smells like Chantal's throat when she had gonorrhea, just infected in a health hazard. So, but it's like freezing to be cleaning it outside. Ooh, I need to get, a, I don't know if I'm going to get a winter jacket. I have some sweaters here. I have a nice scarf that's uh, pretty warm. You know, it's like, it's actually like really, really warm. So. Fork Sniffers Anonymous clocked that this is not a scarf. It's her old poncho that she can no longer fit around her linebacker shoulders. Yikes, indeed, Forky. I don't technically celebrate Christmas, but the thing is, is like, it's ingrained in my culture. Like, I grew up with it. My whole family celebrates, um, you know, and I'm going to be seeing my family for Christmas. And I'm not celebrating the birth of Christ with them, but I'm celebrating just as a family, the winter vibes and all that stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of mixing the two cultures here. We get it. You don't celebrate Christmas, even though you're going to celebrate Christmas. Nobody cares. But even last night, it wasn't even like a full day that I didn't see Sala. Or it might have been a full day after the travel, but one day and I'm just like, babe, I want to come home. <laughs> you know, I miss you so bad. 
you know, and that's okay. I mean, we communicate constantly throughout the day in video chat. We don't go long periods of time without talking. So my plan going forward is to, um, I have a list of things I have to do, especially for like appointments and things I have to take care of. So I'm going to be doing that step by step and uh, visiting people that I miss here. Your mom, aunt, and Pete's? Isn't that all you've got? That won't take very long. You can knock out your whole homecoming in about 30 minutes. And also um, looking for my own place. <laughs> I haven't had my own, own apartment fully on my own. Uh, so I think I lived alone for a very short period of time and then I got a roommate a long time ago. I need to, I think I need to do that. I want to have my own little place, even if it's just a studio or like a small one bedroom. Rent is so expensive here these days. I was looking like, oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm uh, prepared for that, you know, have everything, everything I need for that. First and last. <laughs> oh, I haven't like rented, taken care of, I haven't worried about that stuff in a while. It's like, I don't know, I feel on my own because I didn't have to worry about that stuff in Kuwait, you know, so a lot took care of that rental stuff. But me, now I have to, you know, do it myself. And So she definitely plans on staying a while if she's getting her own place. Are there month-to-month -month leases in Canada, or will she need to sign a six-month or one-year lease? Not that it matters. She doesn't care about breaking a lease. But we at least know this isn't planned to be a few weeks. I'm standing by my statement, she's never going back to Kuwait. And so, yeah, anyway, um, so I'm going to get my own little place. I, I know somebody who has, I, I was talking to a friend recently in their room. They showed me their, they redid their room. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. I want to, I want to set up. I said, you got to help me. You know, I said, you have to help me when I get my place. Let's have a girl's night and just do my room. Well, my room kind of like yours. You have to take me shopping at your little hidden spots. But when I get my own place, I will definitely um, do the decoration, decorating with you guys and um, show you guys the end results and stuff like that. Um, I think I also want to do some videos just like exploring different areas of Canada that I like, like that I'm used to, or of my hometown in depth, um, maybe with some story times. <laughs> I have a lot of new subscribers, so welcome, thank you. I want to hit 100,000 subscribers, and when I do, I want to do something very special for you guys, because you deserve it for following me for so long, so I really appreciate that. Who is this friend? Missy Moo? Is she going to get Chantal some birds? You know she's back, right? She was live today, ignoring the chat. I wonder how long it will be before she's back in Chantal's good graces and doing her doxing for her. So yeah. I guess that's it. I talked a lot. I'm going to go have a nice breakfast for myself. Um, and whatever I have, I might insert a little picture here for you. I might insert at the end. So. <laughs> okay, sorry I had to cut that off. I don't care that she had to take a break to decompress and that Salah is the best pet parent ever. Nice to see she's trying so hard on her diet, though, with that breakfast. Anyway, let's wrap this up with just a few screenshots of what she's been doing on YouTube outside of these two videos. She posted another community tab post where she said, FYI, our pets are not abandoned, nor will they be. They are keeping Salah company. He loves them so much and they love him too. I would never do that. And if you think so, you don't know me. Therefore, your opinion doesn't matter. Have a nice day. And literally, why is she repeating this so much? Who are you trying to convince, Chantal? Yourself or us? Then Salah went live on his gaming channel, and Chantal was in the chat and has a few interesting things to say. Someone asked if Salah can join her in Canada on a six-month visitor visa when she gets settled in her new apartment, and she claims he can. This is a surprise to me, and I'd love to know what those that are much smarter than me think about this. Finally, she says she will be taking legal action to get BBJ back, and that's not the only thing she's taking legal action about— I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. This is far too long of a video, so, as usual, I'll see you later, little gherkins. Pathetic. She 
She's so fat, she's so gross, she will never find love. The only one who can love this woman is the good Lord up above.